All engineers should know about one of the most impressive drainage systems in the world. And that's what I'm going to show you here in this episode. I am here in Parque Burel in Barcelona, Spain, where this amazing drainage system was designed by the architect and creator of the park, Anthony Gaudi. So today I'm going to walk you through how that system was designed, how it works, and show you some pictures, not only of the system, but of the door that only engineers are allowed to access to check on the tanks. Let's do it. Before we go on here, I'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, Tensar International. Check out Tensar Plus, the award-winning design software for construction professionals to design with geosynthetics and calculate their value on projects. Tensar Plus is simple to use with a powerful engineering system at its core. Whether you're designing a crane pad or need to build a temporary road over muck, the cost, time, and carbon savings can be calculated, making comparison with alternatives simple. Whatever you're working on, Tensar Plus is your toolbox for success. So this episode is a little bit different than the typical guest or technical topic or other career development related episodes that we've done here. I wanted to take you with me on my trip to Spain and share with you, number one, a little bit about an amazing architect and professional and really person, Antoni Gaudi, who we're going to talk about, but also... I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the experience that traveling as a civil engineer can have on someone. And I know some of you may think, oh, when I'm traveling, I don't really want to think about work. But as a civil engineer, the way that our brains are wired, if you will, when we do travel, we see things and we don't just see the aesthetics of them or, you know, maybe hear about, you know, getting tickets and going up and seeing views and sights. We think about the functionality of things, right? And why things were designed a certain way. And how does the water get out of there? And, you know, what's the, the stormwater, the irrigation process like? And to me, that's very interesting. It's a very interesting lens to look through when you're traveling. In fact, I wrote an article on LinkedIn not long ago sharing some of the pictures of my trip where I did spend time in Spain, also got the chance to go to Gibraltar and Morocco. And it was really wild and really interesting. And so as a civil engineer, when you do travel, you know, look through that lens, right? Think about how things were built, why they were built that way. Think about how things in that location are different than the way they are um, maybe in your homeland, right? Because I think it does really present an interesting perspective. And what I do want to talk about today is Antoni Gaudi, who was an architect, an architect who not just thought like an architect, but thought like an engineer. And I'm going to talk about Park Guell that he designed in on the outskirts of Barcelona and really the irrigation system that he built and how he was really ahead of the time and you know what went into that and I think that what I love about Gaudi is a lot of times engineers and architects will butt heads right I know engineers often like to say the architects you know want to draw up a very pleasing aesthetic design and then they expect the engineers or the civil engineers to make sure that it can be built right to make sure that it can be uh, constructed, so to speak. But Gaudi really kind of had the best of both worlds. As a child, he was really handicapped in a way with rheumatism where he couldn't really go out and run around. So he spent many summers just observing nature and observing how things worked. And when he became an architect, he had the ability to kind of be mentored by some of the greatest architects in Spain. And he took his love for nature and patterns and he kind of put it all together. And he has some amazing works throughout Barcelona and beyond. Um, maybe one of his most famous works being the Sagrada Familia, um, the church that's actually still under construction um, and has many, many large towers. Um, you should definitely check it out online if you haven't been there. It's an amazing structure. We had the chance to tour that. Um, there's also some houses that he built um, throughout Barcelona where you can go and tour these houses, the multi-level houses that were built for wealthy families um, way back when. And then just all the features are so interesting. But I want to talk about today is Park Well. And Park Well is a park that was built originally. Gaudi was planning to build some large houses there for very wealthy people because it was up and away from the city or the downtown Barcelona. Figured it have people allow people to have a chance to get away. Um, but what happened ultimately was that it was kind of too far away and those wealthy kind of entrepreneurs didn't want to be that far out of the city. So and then he ended up turning it into a park and we took a tour of the park. And as we were walking around the park, what you start to see, and we had a tour and I honestly didn't know this beforehand, 
But you see these amazing walkways and you see these walkways that are covered and all the features that he uses and the mosaics that he uses throughout the park. But then you hear about the fascinating irrigation system that he designed into this park. And when you think about all of the, you know, green designs and sustainability that we're talking about today, he did this many, 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 many years ago, right? Way ahead of his time. Again, because that's the kind of person that he was, right? And we're talking about in the, the late 1800s here, right? And so what he did was, within this park, there are these amazing, amazing 86 stocky columns, all right? That kind of looks like a forest of columns, right? And it's a covered area. Um, it's kind of a courtyard on top of it, a gravel courtyard. And not only do these columns serve to open up the space below the courtyard, but they are the heart of this awesome irrigation system that he built that actually supplies water throughout the entire park, um, which is awesome. It's, it's amazing. So basically what happens is when it rains, you have all these walking paths and a lot of the water comes down to this gravel courtyard. The the water seeps through the courtyard. It goes into pipes within these 86 columns and it goes to kind of this cistern or tank system below subsurface. And I took a picture in front of a, a lock gate where they only allow the engineers to go down into that tank system right below the subsurface. And then from there, it kind of gets piped out throughout the park and can be used for irrigation all throughout the park and fountains and so on and so forth. But again, when you walk through this park and you see the mosaics and you see the views and you see the winding pathways and the stones everywhere, the last thing that you're thinking about is irrigation. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't even thinking about it and wouldn't have even noticed it as a civil engineer who used to work on stormwater unless the tour guide had explained it to me what she did. And I really think that there's a lesson here in that design professionals today, we need to work together, right? And we need to try to build in the smartest, most efficient ways to make sure that our designs are sustainable and that they do their job. And in this design, in Gaudi's design of Park Well, you would not, like I said, know that there's a system there. It's one of the most beautiful parks, if not the most beautiful park that I've ever seen. And I never even thought about the drainage. And all these other places that I walked around in Spain and Morocco and Gibraltar, I was looking for stormwater. I was looking for drainage because that's, that's what I did in my career. But at, in the park, I wasn't thinking about anything except just the mosaics and the views and everything that we got to see. So I think it's something that it's we shouldn't really say in today's world that we aren't capable of doing things like this because they've been done for a long time. So just as kind of wrapping this up, I kind of wanted to challenge you to do two things. One, go out and travel as a civil engineer and look through the lens of a civil engineer and admire the different ways that practical projects are built around the world and maybe take ideas away from these trips and bring them back to your geographic region and to your projects locally. And secondly, think about how creative you can be with your projects. Let's not think about, hey, the architect does one thing and the engineer does another thing. Let's take a whole project approach. Let's work together with other professionals and think through how we can create the most aesthetic designs that are also the most functional because it's been done before and it's gonna have to be done again over and over for us to continue to build sustainable communities around the world. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of little insight to my trip. I hope you'll do a little more research on Gaudi. And if you get the chance to go to Spain, specifically Barcelona, I hope that you'll visit Park Well and that you'll visit the Sagrada Familia, which is in another amazing feat, which is still in construction, by the way. But when I went there with our family, we looked up at it and we were blown away. And then we got the chance to go inside and we were blown away even more. All right, so, and, and if you do have any things that you've seen as a civil engineer, landmarks you think civil engineers should see or learn about, please feel free to put them in the comments of the show notes right below. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, please put them below. And if you're listening to this on the audio version, I would check out our video because I do share some pictures throughout the video of kind of my time in the park and the columns associated with this irrigation system, which is really amazing from a civil engineer's perspective. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better managers and leaders. I'll see you next week.